Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna make our game loop to make our game run smooth and constant. Just like you see here on the screen. Let's go. Before we start, this channel have a Discord server where you can discuss and ask questions about the tutorials of this channel. Or maybe you just want to swing by and say hello. We will also use GitHub throughout this tutorial. There you can check the most recent code, but also code from previous episodes. That comes in handy when something works differently on your side compared to what you see in the episode. And for the people that want to go the extra mile to support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee page and also a membership option on YouTube with some basic perks. With that being said, let's get back to the episode. Let's do a quick recap on the last episode and where we are at the moment in our progress. Last episode, we were only on episode 2, so there won't be too much to cover. And in this episode, we implemented the user input to our game. First, each time there was any type of event happening on the screen, we put our square where that event happened, meaning where we touched on the screen. But we had some weird flickering with that at the start, and we fixed it by repainting the entire canvas black each time we started a new rendering. That's because it does not reset automatically for us. We have to do that. It's the same canvas over and over again for each rendering. Then we played around with array lists. Each event on the screen adds a square to this array list and we draw all squares in this array list each draw call. Then by playing with some random values we got random sizes of our squares in the game and also random colors. And that was our last episode in recap. Now let's get started with episode 3. First, let's actually show the purpose of having a game loop and why it is so important. So in our inner class here for a random square, we can add a move method. So public void move, and it's going to do, well, move the square somewhere. And we also need two directions, one for the x direction and one for the y direction. So private int x dir equals 1 and then we have y direction equals 1. That means if x direction is 1 we're moving to the right. If x direction is negative 1 we're moving to the left. So then we just say the current position plus x direction. So whether it's plus or minus we're shifting from right to left. And the same goes for y direction up or down. So in our move method here we can say uh, position dot x plus equals x direction but we don't want the square to move to the right and disappear out of sight we want to make sure that if we reach the end of either the right side or the left side we want to switch directions so if position dot x is more than 1080 more or uh, equal 1080 because we are in portrait mode so 1080 by 19 20 or position.x is less than or equal to zero meaning we went on the left side we don't want to go below zero so that means x direction times equals negative one and what this is going to do is going to flip if x direction is one going to the right and we multiply it by negative one we get negative one and if it's negative one and we multiply it with negative one we get one so it's a so it's a toggle between positive and negative all the time and we want to do the same for our position dot y so plus equals y direction and if post dot y more or equal than 1920 or post dot y is less than or equal to zero and the same applies here, so y direction times equal negative 1. So that's our move method done. And now we need to call this method every time we call render. And let's go to our render right there. And here we make a private void update. Update. And we're just going to copy this array list loop. And instead of saying square.draw, we say square.move. And now, when we do the untouch event and render, we update the game as well, or update the square, so to speak. 
or the squares. So let's run this and see what we get. I can add just like before, but there is a slight movement each time I click. It's not going very fast. It's actually going very slow, but they are moving. Uh, let's try again, but let's multiply X direction with uh, five and as well with Y direction. So we get the same speed on both. And then we run again and see what we get. Okay, so now it's more noticeable. We're just gonna keep adding and see if they change direction. Some of them do, yes, on the right side. Y direction coming up as well. They should, yeah, there they go. We have some sort of game loop, if you will or at least movement of our squares, but it only happens every time we click. But we want them to move regardless of me clicking or you clicking. So we need to figure out a way to handle this. How do we do that? We can make the game run smooth and constant with something called runnable. And runnable is an interface that has a method and this entire interface is put inside a thread and then when you start the thread, the method called run is going to execute that on a separate thread. And a separate thread you can think of as, just like on your computer, you can have multiple programs running at the same time. You can have multiple threads run at the same time, executing different tasks of that specific program, or in our case, game. And using runnable is very simple, so let's go ahead and add that. And I think for our sake, to keep everything separate and easy to see what is what, we're going to make a new class. And this class is going to be the game loop class. So let's go to our project. And inside this package, we're going to add a new uh, class. We can call it game loop. And if you wonder why I have different colors here, it's because of the GitHub uh, extension here. So don't worry about it. It's still the same code. But our game loop needs to implement runnable, just like we implement surface altered callback, we can implement runnable and we get an error right away. And let's see what they want. Class game loop must either be declared at abstract or implement the method. And we want to use this method run. And whatever we put inside this method here, this run method is going to be executed when we run our thread. So let's go ahead and add a constructor public game loop and like so. And this runnable, as I mentioned, need a thread. So private thread uh, game thread. And in here we can say game thread dot no equals new thread. And it requires a runnable. So we say this for well, this runnable. So whenever we start this game loop now, it's going to run this code. And the way we start it is by saying game thread dot start. And we want our game loop to run until we say it shouldn't run, it shouldn't just run for five iterations or 10 iterations, whatever, it will be an infinite loop. And in here, we can add a while loop. While something is true, so while true is, well, true. This is, of course, a infinite loop because this one will never be false because it says true. And we want to update the game and we want to render the game. But we have no way of talking to game panel. So we need some way of doing that. So in our game panel here, private, not pirate, private, game loop, game loop, and in our game panel constructor, uh, after we set all the colors, we say game loop equals new game loop. Inside our game loop, we need access to this game panel class. So we're just going to say this. And we got some error here, and that's because our game loop constructor does not have the correct parameter. So game panel, game panel. 
And now the error should be gone. Yes. And we're going to add it up here. Private game panel, game panel. Now in our run method here, we want to, well, update the game and also, of course, render the game. So we say game panel dot update. Is it private? It was private, both the render and the update. So we need to set them public. So we can access them from other classes. All right, so game panel dot update and then game panel dot render. First, you wanna update the position of everything and then you wanna render that position, not the other way around. That seems simple enough, anything else? Um, let's actually move this start to a method of its own. Uh, we can put it down here. So public void start loop, start game loop, I think it's better. And we say game thread, not game panel, game thread dot start. And we remove it from there. And we will add more methods here to stop and maybe to pause, whatever. But for now, we're just going to keep it as simple as we possibly can. Now, in our game panel, when the game loop has been set up, everything here has been set up, we are going to go to our surface created and remove the render and just say game loop dot start game loop since we when we create the surface that's when we want to start the actual uh, game loop and in our untouch event here we can just comment out render and update we are not going to call them when we add something they should be added all the time or called all the time in our game loop so let's just take a quick look here yeah that looks uh, yeah that looks good let's run this and see what we get we get a error perfect and that's because we don't set up our game panel here we're just trying to call game panel but game panel is not set up it's just it's null so this dot game panel equals game panel if we run it now i think we won't have the same issue and it looks like it's running let's add a square in the middle all right where did it go? It went down here somewhere, but it's moving and I'm not adding anything. I'm not touching anything. It's and it's looking smooth. It's no flickering or lag or anything like that. So let's keep adding a lot more squares and just a FYI. If you notice some type of lag, like a small little flickering, I will discuss what that is soon. But uh, yeah. Runs smooth enough, don't you think? And we had a crash. And let's start with why is the game running so smooth without us setting how many frames per second, how many updates per second, what's going on? The reason why the game runs so smooth without us having to set a frames per second or updates per second, etc. It seems like it's running very stable, and that's because in our game panel class, this surface view that we are extending and all its components behind the scene have a lock set at 60 frames per second. It's done for us, if you will. And we don't need more frames per second than 60, but some phones have refresh rates of higher than 60 frames per second and or 60 hertz per uh, 60 hertz or 90 hertz or 120 hertz, I think it's called. But we don't need to care about that. We just need to take that into account for the update method a little bit later in this video. How do we know it's 60 frames per second? Well, if we look at the documentation and it's boring, but yeah, it's 60. We can change it but that's only in the most recent Android version, which I think is 11. So we will not touch that. It's more complicated. And well, this is a tutorial for beginners when it comes to Android game development. We don't need to get into all that, how you change it for just this specific Android version. So we're gonna push that aside, but we will take a look at how fast our game is running. And in this loop here, we need to add a few variables to get the current frame per second 
or how many frames there were in the last second of the game. And we can do that by adding a long up here and we can say last FPS check equals system dot current time ls. And this system dot current time ls is going to give us the current time in milliseconds since 1970 when they started to synchronize all time for all computers and it's not giving you the time in like 0223 as we have here in well humanize it's giving you a long string of numbers and that is simply the time since that 1970 when they started at some place and the milliseconds since then and then we need a integer in fps and we're gonna set it to zero and this is simply a counter that we add to one each time we do an update or render and after a second we're gonna check how many frames were that in the last second and then we're gonna print that out in our log and now after we updated the game and rendered the game we want to say fps plus plus increase it with one or increment with one then we want to get the current time long now equals system dot current time ls and we want to check if now minus last fps check have there been more or equal than a second because a thousand milliseconds is a second so a second have passed then we want to say system dot out dot print line fps and then plus fps then we want to reset fps equals zero after we have reset the fps we want to say last fps check plus equal a thousand and you could say equals now like the time we check now minus the last fps check but we're just going to increase it by a thousand meaning a second because this is checking if it's more or equal than a thousand we could have something like a thousand and five from this and that means that this anything above a thousand is going to be thrown away so it's going to give us slightly just a slightly little difference or uh, unaccounted for time when checking fps counters so that's why we're just increasing it by a thousand so the next time those five as we had here those five millisecond are still it's still in the loop otherwise if we didn't take that into account we would just say last fps check equals now but those five milliseconds then would just be gone we wouldn't be able to account for them the, our fps would be more unstable even though the game is running the same it's just our way of presenting or checking the fps count that would be not as accurate it would be accurate to like 99.9% .9 or something but we want that extra accuracy when we are counting for the frames per second so that's why we don't say last fps check equals now we increase it by a thousand which is a second so that five millisecond gets carried over to the next check and yeah let's uh, let's check this how many fps we have or what our frames per second is Let's run it high. Let's add some squares. Hopefully it don't crash. We haven't dealt with that. Psych! Well, that crash. Let's, let's run it again. I'm gonna get to what that is in a second. But let's just add a few here. I mean, come on. <laughs> Alright, 59, 60, 60. And it's not updating. 42, 60. And the small difference here or the uh, unevenness, if you will, is not because of the game being bad, it's because of the emulator not representing a physical device uh, perfect. So if I were running on my actual phone, I'm going to show that right here, or at least a log from my actual phone, it's going to be far more stable. And the emulator can only do so much, it's all software, etc. So yeah but we do get 60 60 60 59 and 61 that can happen but generally speaking looking at the game it's running very smooth and we're not going to get all the printouts because if all of them are 60 the log is just not gonna care or print it out because it's the same printout as the previous time 
but we can do a little cheat sheet here by adding plus and then uh, plus uh, system dot current time ls and we run it again and we're going to get all printouts because it's going to be different from each update so let's add it and there we had a crash already i'm going to get to that crash soon but it's weird that it's happening so fast adding a couple ones all right so now we're going to get a printout every second 60 60 60 60 60 60 60 so yeah it's uh, running at a stable 60 frames per second which is exactly what we want and this fps printout was just to check how many frames per second we have but also to prove that it's running at a very stable 60 frames per second and at some point there will be a lag every game lags one way or another it's just something that's going to happen and we have two parts to a game. We have the update and we have the render. The update is very important. That needs to happen all the time or the update needs to be at a constant. Like we always need to update it in the same speed regardless of what's happening. But rendering, we can skip a few frames here and there. It won't affect the actual game. It's just gonna look a little laggy. But the update is far more important. Let's take for example our player. We're going to run in one second, one pixel per frame. If we then get, for example, here we have 54 frames in that second, that means that the player only got, well, 54 pixels to the right, compared to the last second where the player got 60 pixels to the right. It's the same game, it's the same speed, but we accidentally skipped a few uh, frames. And we're updating our game based on the FPS. So we need to take this loss of time into account when we are updating our game. How do we do that? And we do that with something called delta or delta time. And the way delta time works is that depending on the duration since the last update and render, or in this case only update, we don't care about using delta for render so we're gonna stick to just the update section and depending on the duration since the last update the delta will be given or will be a different value if the time since the last update were long meaning that there were some lag delta is gonna be or delta time is gonna be bigger if the time since the last update were very short meaning that the update came very fast the delta time will be low and this delta time is something that we're gonna add and use for everything that needs to be updated in form of position for example our squares or other things that may need to be sensitive to time and position is one of them so and how we're gonna do that is by going to our run method here our game loop and add a long last delta is equal to system dot nano time and we're using nano time here for more precision this is millisecond we don't need to be as precise and we're also going to add a nanosecond variable that's just uh, a billion in value and that is one second in nano time and these underlines are not changing the value it just makes it easier for us to read so this is the same as this, but if you take a quick glance and look away, what was the value? Hard to remember or hard to see. So we just add a underline here. You can add as many as you want, but I keep them in the three digits. So it's very easy to see. So this is one billion. And then in our loop here, we add a long as well. Long now delta is equal to system system.nanotime so just like our fps check down here checking the now time we do the same here for delta then we need to have a long uh, time since last delta uh, which is equal to now delta minus last uh, not fps check delta now we get a time in nanoseconds since the last update or last delta. And now we can check what the current delta is for this update. So uh, double for more precise or precision, double delta 
is equal to times since last delta divided by nanosecond. And it's going to be highlighted in yellow, meaning integer division in floating point context. And that means that this equation right here, by default, they are divided as they were integer and whole number. So a whole number divided by whole number is going to return a whole number. And let's use something Java does. So we're going to either change one of them to a double or a float, but double in this case, and the yellow goes away. So, and now we're forcing it to be a division in double. So we have now delta, and this delta we're going to pass to our update method. We're going to move that up a little bit. And we get an error, so we need to go to this, control left click, and one problem, double delta. We're going to take this delta now and move to our move method. Going to go here, double delta. And with this delta, we're going to remove the 5 and the 5. And it's going to be such a small number, so we might as well... Uh, multiply by 60, because they, we're trying to run a 60 base frames per second, so it's a good starting point. Uh, we can change it as we want later, but as for now we're going to keep the values in here hard-coded. Later we might have a constant that all objects are updating to. Then we go back to our game loop and the error is gone. But we need to do one last thing and that's last delta equals now delta. Increase FPS, check for printing out the FPS, and redo over and over and over. All right, let's give this a try and see how it looks. It's moving very slow because I think it's actually one pixel per uh, second right now. So we can, of course, increase that. Go to game panel, I think. Let's put 300, a much bigger number, and let's see the speed and of course if you want to go faster in y direction or x direction just change those values and you're good to go but let's see 300 and 300 and that is going much faster let's hope I don't get any errors or crashes let's take a look at our log and it's running pretty smooth, or rather, it's not running pretty smooth, it's running smooth. That's very good. We're taking into account for any type of loss. We had a loss of uh, a couple frames here, stop doing that. Uh, we had a couple loss here. We had five frames loss in that second, but that's okay. The frames drop, we render just a little bit less in a second than we did in the previous second, but since we're using delta time here, if there is a loss in time, that is taken into account for the next update that followed the slower update or the slower iteration of that game loop, which is very nice. But we did have some crashes before. Let's see if I can replicate it by just spamming here. Let's see. I'm, inside. I'm just adding as many as I can. There we have one. And let's go down here. Go to error. And look what it says. Concurrent modification exception at this position. Okay, what does that mean? And this error right here, concurrent modification exception, and points to an array list dot next. It's a very common error that happens when you're working with threads and array lists. Because if you take a look at our concept of our game we have one thread that handles the game update and rendering and then you have the main thread of the program that is handling the user inputs and and everything in the background that we don't really touch it's just part of the android ecosystem so what is this error uh, hinting at or why is it happening well we are having one array list that is being loop through or iterated in our game loop. Let's go and look for them. Uh, right here, update, we can go to update. And here is a array list, the squares array list, this one. And in our update, we're updating it or iterating through it and then we're updating the move. All right, cool. 
And in our render, we have the same array list, but we're updating the draw or drawing it. But in our main activity, not main activity, but game panel, my bad, we have a untouch event. And this untouch event is adding to that array list. And what is happening here is that one thread, the main thread when we click here, is adding to that array list. We're adding one here, nothing weird. And another thread is using the same identical array list and it's updating it. It's getting the next position and updating that square and the next square and so on. And when you add and iterate at the same time, then you get this concurrent modification exception. So two threads are not supposed to work in the same array list at the same time, or rather you're not supposed to add as you are iterating through the same array list. That causes errors and that is the error. And there are a few ways to work around this. But the simplest that we're going to use, because we're going to remove the squares uh, array list and the inner class. And that is either one by using something called synchronize, synchronized. And we want to, what do we want to synchronize? Well, squares. And whatever we put inside here, let's do that. And what synchronize means here is that only the main thread, when because we're touching and then we're adding to the array list, only the main thread is allowed to use the squares array list. Once we're done with it, outside here, another thread can use the square array list. But we need to do the same for the other places where we're using this array list. So we're just gonna take that, copy paste, and we can do the same up here. And we can copy paste that, put that there, take this part, and put that part like so. So now when we are rendering or updating it, we're making sure that only the game loop thread is allowed to access this uh, array list. And down here, we're making sure that only the main thread, which is the one that handles the user inputs, is allowed to touch the square array list. So let's see if that did change anything. So I'm just adding here and I should not get any type of error any type of crash, even if I spam here. It's hard to do on a mouse, but... And you can try this yourself. You're not gonna get that type of error right now because we're making sure that only one thread can handle or use the square array list at one time. And yeah, I think I proved my point. There's probably hundreds of squares here been adding as long as I've been talking about this. And that's a lot of squares. So let's take a look at our uh, frames per second. Let's bring that up. 60, 60, 60, keep adding. 59, we get some loss of frames when we are adding like this. It's an emulator, it's not perfect. So the game itself works fine. It's just, uh, it's just an emulator. If you run this on your physical phone and keep trying and just add a bunch of squares, you will have a much smoother result. <laughs> Our game will not consist of hundreds or thousands of squares like this moving around the screen. This is just a simple stress test for our user inputs and our thread handling. Of course you can go much more advanced when handling with threads and so on, but now we just need the most basic version that there is and we got it working very well in this episode. And I suggest you run this on your physical Android phone. You're going to have a much smoother experience. So it's a more fair test. All right, that was it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and learned something new today. If you did, hit that subscribe button so you get notified of the next episode. Till then, my friends, have a good day and take care. I hope to see you in the next one as well. Bye.